Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the discovery of what seems to be the largest galaxy out there, or at least the largest radio galaxy. The galaxy that you see right here in this image that the scientists are currently referring to as Alcyoneus, located around 3 billion light years away from us. But before I tell you a little bit more about this galaxy, let's first start with the idea of radio galaxies compared to some of the other large galaxies we know of. Now, first of all, as the name implies, radio galaxies are generally galaxies that tend to produce way more radio light than a lot of other galaxies near them. The best example here is the nearby Centaurus A. Now, this is sort of what it looks like if you were to combine various frequencies of light, but if you were to look at this galaxy in radio light alone, it would resemble a tremendously large structure that you see right here. We've discussed this in one of the previous videos somewhere right there or in the description below, but this thing right here is several times larger than the full moon in the night skies, stretching hundreds of thousands of light years across. But this structure is really only formed by the two astrophysical jets, very likely produced by the central black hole. And so all of this is formed by the black hole itself and can only be formed in so-called active galactic nuclei. But obviously, if you remove the jet and if you remove the activity, the galaxy then shrinks in size, or at least looks much smaller. As a matter of fact, most of these galaxies will appear as relatively small elliptical galaxies. So sort of like this. Elliptical galaxies are some of the more common galaxies out there, and generally speaking, even now we don't really have a really good way of measuring where these galaxies end. Mostly because they sort of slowly diffuse away, but some of them do have relatively large extended halos. And to date, the largest such galaxy, the largest elliptical galaxy, is the famous IC1101. The galaxy we've talked about many years ago, and a galaxy that literally dwarfs every other galaxy in the universe. This thing is at least 2 million light years across, at least uh, from the center to some of the outer regions of the halo, and is generally considered to be at least 40 times bigger than the Milky Way galaxy, possibly even more. But it's extremely difficult to define where this galaxy actually ends. We just know that it's just really, really, really big. If this right here is the Milky Way, this is the rough estimate of the size of IC1101. But even 2 million light years is nothing compared to some of the radio galaxies, at least the jets created by these galaxies. Now typically a radio galaxy will always have the same features. It will be some sort of a central elliptical galaxy, there will be two jets in opposite directions, and it will always have a hot spot right here. Although the actual plumes can be slightly different depending on what's happening in the vicinity of the galaxy and what sort of mass distribution there is as well. Once again, a really good example is right here from Centaurus A. But some of the larger radio galaxies out there, especially the ones that have been studied for a long time, really sort of start blowing our minds, at least when it comes to size. So, for example, the iconic Hercules A galaxy you see right here is already almost the same size as the IC1101. This is nearly one and a half million light years across, and this is not even closest to being the biggest of these galaxies. This is actually one of the smaller ones, although it did become popular because it's so easily observable and also because it has an extremely massive black hole in the center, at least 4 billion masses of the sun in mass. And in the last few years, scientists have discovered more and more of these unusual galaxies with one of the videos from last year that you can find right there or in the description describing a little bit more about this, with some of these galaxies reaching over 10 million light years across with many of these beautiful galaxies revealing their true size in just the last few years, simply because we've developed a lot of different, very powerful radio telescopes. This is, for example, a galaxy known as IC4296. Here are actually two examples from just the last year's study. Both of these galaxies are really large. The larger one is about 6.5 million light years across. That's more than three times larger than IC1101. But now we obviously have a new record holder. This is coming from this new study. So, located around 3 billion light years away from us, we have a galaxy stretching approximately 16.3 million light years across, over 8 times bigger than IC1101. And not only does this make it the largest galaxy and the largest radio galaxy, it also makes it one of the largest galactic structures to begin with, with the name Alcinius being the Greek name after the son of Uranus, the Greek god of the sky. This particular god was responsible for trying to fight Hercules 
for the entire supremacy of the cosmos, with this sculpture indicating that Hercules kind of won. But in the process of discovering this galaxy, the scientists were able to provide several answers about radio galaxies that we're going to discuss, with one major mystery that we still cannot answer being what exactly makes radio galaxies the way they are. In other words, why is it that only certain elliptical galaxies become these tremendously large structures? For example, why Hercules A, why Centaurus A, why not IC1101? And although we know that many galaxies do have radial lobes, including our own galaxy, whose radial lobes were discovered just a few years ago, you can see them in bluish-green color right here, there is still no clear explanation for why Centaurus A and other radio galaxies end up producing lobes that are just extremely large in comparison, very long, very powerful. And so the nature of these giant radio galaxies is not entirely understood. Now, at first the scientists thought that, well, maybe, it's all connected to the central black hole. The larger the black hole, the larger the lobes. But it doesn't really make sense, because galaxies like Hercules A seem to have lobes that are slightly below average in size, yet the black hole in the middle is one of the largest ever found. Likewise, Centaurus A has lobes that are pretty large, but the black hole in the center is not believed to be really massive at all, with the newly discovered Alcinius galaxy being somewhere in the middle. It's about 400 million masses of the Sun, or about 10 times less massive than the one in Hercules A, but obviously a lot more massive than the one in Centaurus A. So this particular logic of black holes being responsible for the length of lobes does not seem to make sense right now. It has to be some other reason. And some of the previous studies have suggested that maybe it's not really about what's inside the galaxy, not about the internal structure. Maybe it's actually about the environment where they're located, or about how these galaxies are positioned in regards to all of the other galaxies, and more importantly, in regards to the mysterious cosmic web and cosmic filament. The mysterious overdensity that forms these very beautiful patterns across the universe, where a lot of galaxies seem to be located. For example, the shape of plumes in this galaxy already suggests that just like the Milky Way, this galaxy is traveling inside the filament, where the gas inside the filament seems to be reshaping and changing the direction of some of these plumes. And because the galaxy itself seems to be a fairly normal elliptical galaxy that also seems to have an average mass of about 240 billion masses of the Sun, slightly less massive than the Milky Way galaxy, it suggests that whatever is happening inside the galaxy is definitely not responsible for the formation of the large plumes. The extremely large plumes are very likely formed by the interaction with the environment, especially since the mass here is so much lower than all of the other radio galaxies known to us. And so one suggestion here so far is that, well, maybe it only happens in regions of the galaxy where the overall density of material is much lower than it usually is. So maybe it's happening close to, for example, a typical void or some other under density, usually located not so far away from the filament. And moreover, these observations also point at the filament itself potentially being somehow responsible for the production of these really large jets and really large plumes. As a matter of fact, there seems to be some sort of a connection between the filament structure, the filament density, and also the size of the jets. It's still not clear what the actual connection is, but the answer in regards to the size of these jets seems to be more connected to the cosmic filament more so than the galaxy itself. Moreover, by studying the structure of these lobes and their interaction with the nearby material, it becomes possible to actually start probing some of the other secrets, including what's happening in the intergalactic medium, and potentially answer the questions about dark matter as well. But I guess even more shockingly is that this particular galaxy is still growing in size. The plumes are slowly growing larger and they're actually moving away from the galaxy, and so this galaxy is going to remain the largest galaxy simply by growing bigger and bigger. Although obviously at some point both of these plumes will most likely dissipate and become part of the intergalactic medium. And the only reason that the galaxy was even discovered is simply because our radio telescopes have become so extremely powerful. This one here was discovered with the European telescope known as LOFAR, Low Frequency Array, that sort of is made out of approximately 20,000 radio antenna spread across 52 locations in Europe. It sort of forms a network that kind of resembles this. 
And by trying to find unusual radio galaxies in order to try to answer some of the mysteries, they accidentally discovered the largest galaxy we have so far. The record is going to be really, really difficult to break. But for now, I guess that's all I wanted to mention. It's a pretty exciting discovery. We don't really know much else about the galaxy just yet, but I'm sure we will in the next few years. And until we discover more, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the relevant links and previous videos in regards to this topic in the description below. Maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.